Welcome to another edition of Those Muckrakers. What episode, I, what episode are we on? I know we're in the 30s. 37. Almost episode, in the 40s. Episode 37. My God, we'll have been, we've been doing this for 37 weeks. I haven't done anything good for me for 37 weeks in a row before. You're right. I thought you were about to say you'd never done anything for 37 weeks straight, and I was all like, what about the... Oh, you mean something positive. You're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, this may not ultimately turn out to be positive for us. Uh, God, um, this week, uh, we both kind of, uh, after the horrible uh, Brett uh, Canova confirmation, kind of turned off the news a little bit. Yeah, so basically, after that disaster, I uh, sort of just like blacked out the news all the way up until 33 minutes ago, whenever I was like, ah, right, we still have a podcast to do tonight and so i went to twitter read some like pokemon news and then i was like oh i'm doing the wrong thing and then 10 minutes ago i finally put some notes together and i think i'm up to date on a week's worth of news you don't know what it's like so i was trying to get ready for this podcast real quickly in like the 15 minutes we had uh i'm eating a baked potato with no shirt on ah like a hot that, baked potato that you are the potato no the potato was hot i was the one eating it Right, but I mean, you would also be a hot baked potato without your shirt on. Uh, people would beg to differ. But <laughs> it's really horrible because, like, so I'm eating it, and I'm reading this news, uh, and I'm getting angry, and then the potato's burning me, and it's falling and burning my chest, and I'm like, what? <laughs> ow! 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 Damn it! Go! Oh! Oh! I, I picture both of your um, your bosoms playing hot potato with the potato, like da do da hoo ha, it was, throwing it, was, it back and forth from one chesticle to the other. It was bad too because then like you bite into a hot piece and the other hot piece would be attached by the skin and then it would kind of like swing <laughs> swing down like a mountaineer, like saving another climber and like just scorch my chest. And then I would read something on the, <laughs> some some more news that I'd be like what no, oh! like yeah, it was it's not the way that you should read the news. I guess is See, what I'm saying with a hot potato just rolling around your chest. Yeah, because, I mean, that's normally how You see how something it... that upsets you, and you, like, sit up real fast, and it rolls straight towards your groin area. Um, oh, I had pants no, on. I had pants no, on this time. Yeah, but no shirt to slow it. It can... It's, and the potato is then going at ramming speed. I got, I got the chest hair to slow it. <laughs> Not after the forest fire of chest hair started by the potato. <laughs> so the, uh, the big thing I wanted to talk about today, especially... Uh, seeing as how, uh, you are still in Georgia, and I'm from Georgia, um, is the Georgia governor's race. And Jesus, what a piece of crap this is turning out to be. Yeah. Both of us are from southeast Georgia, okay? But, um, uh, um, I don't so, know, I don't uh, know why in Ray Charles' song about it, he, he didn't have a, a lyric about, like, Georgia governors stealing races... Um, cause it's, it's, it's like, it's Georgia history. Um, there was a thing and I looked it up again before this, which was great. Um, Eugene Talmadge, uh, the Georgia governor in like 1947, he ran like, like four terms. Uh, he was a racist piece of crap. Um, he was very much like segregation. Mm -mm, I like it. Uh, so he, he sparked this thing known as the time Georgia had three governors cause he won the election in 47 then he died before the inauguration, so like his lieutenant governor was like, "What up? Up? That means I, I can be governor, right?" And like there were like two other guys that also wanted to be governor. So apparently in Georgia, you can just call yourself governor. The okay, I am now the governor of Georgia. Yeah, that is uh, how I expect all of our listeners to address me from henceforth. In this uh, gubernatory race, I am the winner. So what what ended up happening? And this was this is like some uh, oh my god. Uh, just let me read you the thing real quick. There were three men who made claims to the governorship. Ellis Arnold, the outgoing governor, Melvin E. Thompson, and the lieutenant governor-elect, Herman Talmadge, Eugene Talmadge's son. Arnold said that he should remain in office until his successor was sworn in, um, Arnold being uh, the outgoing governor. Uh, Thompson said he should be sworn in as the governor in Eugene Talmadge's place upon his swearing in as lieutenant governor. Um, Talmadge supporters had been unsure of his chances of surviving until he was sworn in. So he's so old and racist and shitty, they're like, well, I don't know if he's going to make it, but I'm sure going to vote for him. Um, I oh, mean, God loves a dictator, so the odds of him lasting well into his hundreds is good. So they did some research in the state constitution and found out that if uh, Talmadge died, the Georgia General Assembly would choose between the second and third place finishers. Talmadge ran unopposed! Um, so they secret, oh. yeah. So they secretly arranged 
as insurance for some write-in votes for Eugene's son, who would run his father's uh, successful campaign for governor. So Anyway, uh, just to make it short, all three of them declared that they were governor. One set up in the governor's office and refused to leave. Uh, let's see, Arnold and Thompson refused to accept the vote by General Assembly. Uh, Thompson began legal, uh, legal proceedings to appeal to the Supreme Court of Georgia. Arnold physically refused to leave, um, so both Talmadge and Arnold sat in the Georgia state capitol claiming to be governor. Um, the next day, uh, Talmadge took control of the governor's office and arranged to have the locks changed. Eventually, Arnold relinquished his claim. So you've got like three governors going like, I'm the governor, I ain't leaving. I tell you, you leave, I'm going to change them locks. It's like, why these these guys might as well have been in a trailer. It's like uh, musical chairs, but nobody wants to um, give up the chair and let one person sit down. I kind of hope that when they were both sitting in the Capitol building that they did only have one chair. And he was he was like, <laughs> you get up. No, you get up. Mm, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit here. So they just both kind of wedged into the governor's seat. <laughs> This, uh, yeah. this sounds very much like a story I accidentally wrote one time. Well, my point being is that, like, it's nothing for, like, people who are pieces of crap, uh, like candidate Brian Kemp, to just be like, yeah, I'm the governor. Yeah, speaking of um, stories I write, by which I mean speaking of fiction, by which I mean speaking of nonfiction, he's actually doing this. He's yeah. um, trying to steal the election right now by invalidating over 75,000 voters. Well, I before I did a like kind of a deep dive on him like I hadn't been paying attention to the Georgia governor's race since this this other moron whose name I can't remember was running around Georgia in a painted school bus that said like uh illegal immigration bus. Yeah, I remember that guy. It, it, I this, know who you're talking about. Well, what was so stupid about it was on the back. So it's also his campaign bus, right? Kind right. of hinting that he might be an illegal <laughs> And on the back of it... The, the way it's worded, it makes it sound like everyone that's inside of this bus is illegal immigrants. Well, and that's where he and his family was living as they drove around Georgia well, campaigning. Because on the back of it, it said, this bus is full of rapists, criminals, illegals. And I'm like, you realize your whole campaign is inside that bus, right? Therefore, you're calling yourself criminals and illegals. Uh, so that guy dropped out. I my guess is he was going for uh, the honesty angle until he realized, oh, these are all crimes. Well, no, I was talking about other people. So when it came down to Abrams and Kemp, I have, I don't, I don't, I don't like Kemp at all. He's the Georgia, I think he's the Georgia Secretary of State or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and he uh, is in charge of Georgia's uh, election. Uh, I guess overseeing the elections, and everyone goes, so you're going to recuse yourself and step down while the election's going in in uh, in, in terms of fairness, right? And I guess Kemp was like, nope. So he's got this political ad I watched. I didn't realize this was him. He got in trouble a while back. He had a political ad where he's pointing a gun at this teenager and going, I got a couple rules for dating my daughter, and I'm not going to give up guns. I'm Brian oh, yeah. Kemp. I'm running for... Yeah. We, we definitely talked about that like at a much earlier Muckrakers. Cause, um, so that's the, that's who Brian Kemp is. I know who that is then. Yeah. And he's like, I got a, I got just a couple rules for dating my daughter and whatever it was. He looks... Apparently one of his um, rules is not, you know, you don't point shotguns at children, because that's what he does in the ad. He points a shotgun at a kid. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, and even my dad was like, you know, you can't, you can't do stuff like that, you know? Because... But er, I think he said that his dad. My dad always had a say, and there's no such thing as an unloaded gun. You got to yeah. treat them all like they're loaded. Well, I've lost a lot of cousins to um, <laughs> quote unquote unloaded guns, right? Yeah, there's a saying that says no one's ever been accidentally shot by a loaded gun. By a hmm. yeah. So the death of this joke is like, is that like no one's accidentally shot themselves with a gun that's loaded because they always go, yeah, 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 man, it ain't loaded. Just look down the barrel. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> my eyes. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I had... I love that your cousins are just like, you know what, I like this guy. He's like me. He points guns at people while saying they're unloaded, but clearly they're loaded. All right, and I mean, the problem is slowly resolving itself, but, like, not at a fast enough rate to prevent him from uh, rigging the election by kicking off uh, voters that um, know better. Well, like... So, like my, so, my dad's no fan of his because, you know... Because your, whole... your dad's a war veteran. Your dad has pointed guns at people who then pointed guns back, and then they both shot at each other, so your dad's fully aware of what guns do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, of course, that is not uh, enough to convince my mom to uh, 
not like him. And you were going to discuss why that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right, you got to watch this. Go, go. If you're listening, go online. Look up Brian Kemp political ad. So I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to be funny, but he comes off like Forrest Gump. Like he just kind of has this vacant look in his eyes. And he says, uh, he describes himself as, I'm a politically incorrect conservative. Um, and at one point he's in a truck and he goes, I got a big truck just in case uh, I, me and Jenny need to round up some criminal illegals and take them home myself. <laughs> yep, I just said that. And then another point he goes, I'm so conservative, I blow up government spending. I own guns that no one is going to take away. Like, these are all things that he said in his in his ad. He's Mama got a always, truck so he can round up illegals. Mama always told me life is like a truck full of illegals. You, you never know what you're going to get. Exactly. He, he looks like... So he's saying these things, but the look on his face seems like he doesn't understand what he's saying. Like that famous scene in Forrest <laughs> Gump where the guy's like, Hey, hey, Forrest, they want us to go to school with coons. And Forrest goes, I, I don't know what the problem is. When when the raccoons get on my porch, my mama just chases them away with a broom. <laughs> like, he seems like, like I don't know what the problem is with the legals. I just, mama just puts them in the truck and takes them home. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, I mean, so he's just reading these signs looking like someone who does not speak English. Like, he is an illegal immigrant himself. He Ma doesn't mama, know the language. Mama he's, says, just, <laughs> he's just reading the words, right, that someone put in front of him. Mama said being a oh, white man would take me Lagos. anywhere. <laughs> and, and she was right. And one I day... be a SCOTUS. One day, I wanted to be governor, so I started running. <laughs> like, what and, an uh, idiot. And well, the worst part is this idiot is in charge of the election, and so everyone goes, yeah, you can't really be in charge of the election and running it. And he goes... Ma, 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 mama, mama, and Mitch McConnell said I did not have to step down. And so, like, he's now so, he's so like the guy who is in charge of the election and all that gets to um, run himself, and he's already like culling voters left, right, and center. Yeah, and he's given like paper thin excuses. He's like, well, uh, well, I just I don't want there to be any uh, illegitimate votes. Okay, I'm cutting back on voter fraud. I you hope... know, even though we have seen zero evidence of voter fraud well, anywhere. Well, Georgia has this new super verification system. Uh, where like if there's a hyphen in your name that got dropped or there's something misspelled or not an exact match, it takes away your vote and puts you in like a weird hold. And he's like, in July, he was just like, nobody will not be allowed to vote because of this system. And then like, was it 50, bullshit? Was it's it 50, designed? Was it fifty three thousand or seventy five thousand people that are now probably ineligible to vote? Seventy five thousand. I remember when I still lived in Georgia when I had to go get a new license and they started this ridiculous. They started this years ago when they started this super duper like to get your license. You, I needed to bring like it was like a sorcerer was telling me how to lift a curse. Like <laughs> I'm like, all right, what do I need to get my new my new verified license? And they're like, well, you'll need a birth certificate, the eye of Newt, a petal from a flower that grows only on the east side of the tallest mountain. And I'm like. Well, I gotta bring all that. They're like, yes, goodbye. I'm like, wait, what? God damn it! You and must it... bring it to me by the next full moon, or yeah. else your first child will belong to the state of Georgia. It, <laughs> it, yeah, it was. And so... He disappears in a puff of smoke. It was irritating. Like, Hold on! Ah. I, had, I had lost my former license, or it expired, or something, and so I was like, well, what happens when my license expired? And they're like, well, then, young Jedi, I guess you will die. Not nobody gets in to get that driver's license. Not nobody. Not know how. Yeah, it's slim. Like, fucking, yeah, it's so ridiculous. Well, well, that's a horse of a different color. So they're they're the worst part is so they're it's clear clear <laughs> voter. Oh, I just thought of a better line. Oh no, you don't understand. I'm white. Oh, that's a horse of a different color. Come right on in. Come right on in. Well, it's the the problem is like, so this could go to the Supreme Court for violating the Voter Rights Act or the the, the Voter Civil Rights Act and all that stuff. But the Supreme Court gutted it a while back by going like, "Yeah, man, we're good. You know, civil rights. It's not. We good. We got it. We got it." Uh, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg dissented on the decision, going, "Getting rid of uh, the Voting Rights Act, uh, especially because you think it's done its job, is like getting rid of your umbrella in a rainstorm because you go, I'm not wet." Yeah. She's RBG. So if you know she's sexy, so he's she's got the mood. <laughs> so he's suppressing the tribes, and the law. Wow! It's very unlikely that anything will be done about it. 
Um, the NAACP, I think, is going to sue him. And it basically it comes down to, like, he's a white Forrest Gump-looking guy and Stacey Abrams is a black woman. I don't think that race should matter uh, in a in a, in a like race should matter in like a uh, like a Georgia's governor's race, except for the fact that <clears throat> I feel like Stacey Abrams, being a black woman from Georgia, probably really understands what it's like to be discriminated against. Like, whereas I don't think Forrest Gump Brian Kemp would understand that. I, like I said earlier, I don't think he knows English. I think people just gave him English words to read. It's I, like well, you know how Forrest, some sort you know, of you know how Forrest Gump always had like minders. They were like Forrest, why don't you stand over here, hold our ping pong paddle, and say you enjoy using this? We'll give you one million dollars, and he's like, I enjoy using ping pong super ping pong paddles. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's who we have running right now with uh, probably. Mitch McTurtle feeding him his lines. And he might win, and he might win, which is annoying. So if you're running for, like, if you're running as a, a, a governor or anything, right, and you go, man, right. whew, I'm going to lose this race because these people don't want to vote for me, then maybe do things that make them want to vote for you instead of trying to go, can we just not let them vote? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if uh, only people that are willing to vote for you were allowed to vote, then of course you're going to win. And like, people, but it's easier. It's so much easier for the GOP to rig the election than it is for them to actually have popular ideas or I viable dis- ideas. I disagree. Do you know how quickly, uh, easily they would stay into power if they just well, besides their well, their handlers with well, money. We already know that they can just change their position and their dopey followers will just follow right so along So why with not it change it for good, you assholes? Because Trump just very recently said that he fell in love. Like, those are his exact words. I fell in love with Kim Jong-un, right? Like, nor- he and North Korea, BFFs forever. That's something that no GOP president should ever be able to say without being destroyed by his base. But his base cheered him on because he said it. Yeah. So clearly they don't actually have any values or stand for anything. They just like whatever he likes. Well, so they could, they mm-hmm. really could just I, change it to something positive. All this, all this won't matter anyway because I've got really good news. And it's very good. morbid. All right. So the UN just released a statement saying that we have 12 years to limit climate change catastrophe. Now you may be going, Pete, why is that good news? Well, because it's fake news, well, okay? Well, what happens basically anytime they've gone like, "Oh, if we don't, well, if we don't do something, the climate's going to be real bad." They are always giving the um, best most best, optimistic. Yeah, optimistic. Uh, you know, very much like, always look on the bright side of life. Like, they're always doing that. So if they're telling us that we have 12 years, we have less than 12 years. And the reason I'm excited about it is because I like I like living in times of massive change, you know, um, in history, as I'm a historian. And, I, 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 and everything, everything is going to change. Society, every, capitalism, all that. It's all going to change, and it will not be able to survive this. You're going to see massive, not only like the massive like floods. Oh, by the way, I found out what causes uh, sea level rise. Uh, do tell. It's called thermal expansion. As the water heats up, uh, as you know, sometimes when things get warm, they expand. So basically, the oceans are expanding mm. uh, because of the heat. Uh, so uh, you know the um. The Arctic is actually melting at a much faster, yep. faster rate than they ever anticipated. It was not just the uh, ice on the surface is melting, but also underneath as well. And they're yeah. like, "Oh, we didn't even think of that." Yeah. So you're gonna, we're gonna see you're gonna see food shortages. Uh, you're gonna see water shortages. Uh, the way society works, it's gonna be kind of like if you've ever studied uh, your history, and you saw what happened to society after the uh, after the Black Plague happened. It basically that was kind of the that was kind of the end of like feudal society and the beginning of um, the industrial revolution. You had such a such a shakeup that like they couldn't go. You know what, you peasants, you're going to harvest the grain and you're going to do it for a penny. Now you decide who gets the penny, but you're only getting one. So <laughs> it went from that to like the peasants are like, well, you know what, uh, there's like uh, you know how there used to be twenty of us. Well, there's two. And we're not going to harvest your grain uh, unless you pay us two pennies apiece. And they were like, oh, that's ridiculous. I guess. And then we invented machines to do the work because we didn't have the workload to do it. 
Mm-hmm. But point being, it changed. It changed everything about society. Like it changed the way people felt about religion. Like everything. So that's what's going to happen with climate change. Um, one way or another, uh, either we're going to try to change things ourselves, or uh, in this case, we're not, and uh, the circumstances will force us to change. Yar. And since so we're that looks fun. well, since we're like middle age, we'll probably die. I think. But at least we'll get to live to see it, and that's kind of exciting. It is, right? Like, I want to see everyone else die before I die, right? Like, I don't mind dying if everyone else does it first. <laughs> uh, 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 old Patrick Sheikh Mohammed of ISIS said on the podcast, <laughs> I want everyone to die before me, and then I can die. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it would be a nicer death, I think. Well, that's the thing, too, is, like, people are like, climate change is fake news. Well, all those people are also getting pounded by hurricanes right now. Um, yeah, the, the the very people that vote the most adamantly against it are the ones getting pelted by hurricanes nonstop. It's a little bit ironic. I feel for them, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe believe science? Like, And uh, and while they're being pelted by hurricanes, what what is their um, fascist leader doing? He's chilling with Kanye in the White House. Yeah, you know, all right, so, like, I'm, I was, I've been trying to stay away from the president of this podcast because I'm really hyper-focused on the, the, Georgia, uh, the Georgia governor's race. Right. But he wrote an op-ed uh, for, for New York Times, for not New York Times, for the USA Today. So uh, uh, Trump writes this op-ed about uh, Medicaid. And I know he didn't write it because it's not misspelled and it wasn't all in caps. But nevertheless, it was attributed to him. And I was so angry that a paper would publish this without fact-checking it. It uh, is funny, but one of the uh, links that he added to this disproved the very thing that he was claiming and proved that he was lying about it. Of course. So that's funny. Because, like, even he didn't thoroughly check it, or well, whoever actually yeah. wrote this well, didn't it, thoroughly it read, check it. It read like a basic corporate talking piece of, uh, uh, you know, like the people that don't want you to have, uh, you know, medical care, they want you to pay for it, saying that how the same old tired old dribble that like oh if we give medicare for all that's going to lower it's going to lower your uh uh your treatment and you're you're not going to be able to get the same level of treatment or choose your doctor and there'll be lines and like da 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 i stopped reading it cuz i'm like why am i reading a paper full of lies yeah it just yeah. it just occurred to me i go if someone handed me an essay he goes hey can you read this essay it's a it's lies and I'd be like, is it satire? No, no, no. It's just a corporate talking piece that's a lie. I'd be like, why would I want to read that? Yeah. Um, that's yeah. genuinely... Oh, A, that's what it is. But B, I think the reason why they released it in the first place is to try and make this uh, deplorable piece of shit sound smarter than he actually is. And that's why they got someone else to write it. Well, they did come back and release a fact check version later, but it's like... Why would you even publish that in your fucking paper without publishing a column right next to it going, this is not true, this is also not true, this is not true. If healthcare is so bad, then why why does all of Congress and the President have subsidized, like, single-payer healthcare? I have a, um, by the points, uh, listing here of everything he said that was, um, easily provably wrong. If you'd like to go through that, or we could just skip it and talk about something else. No, we gotta go through it. I don't want to... But, uh... Well, I so don't want to that I actually have not yet read the um, article. And so what I have to present to us here was uh, not written by me, but someone named Brekka from uh, MMO Champion. Brekka's also a prolific writer just like Scro. So, like, I really don't know what to say besides someone else wrote this. Let's cover Kanye real quick. Kanye put on a Make America Great Again hat. Sat in the <laughs> sat in the Oval Office and then just proceeded to talk like a homeless person on the train asking for if, money. If um, you recognize the name Kanye but can't quite place him, uh, do you remember the meme that goes? Now, I'm gonna let you finish, but so and so is the best whatever. That that was Kanye. I think he started everybody, that I by, think everybody by knows, interrupting. They already knew Kanye, but like he basically babbled at the president for a long period of time. The president just looked like he'd been out crazy. You know, yeah, he just sat there in just stunned silence at how insane this guy is wearing yeah. a stupid red hat. You know, like in and, a, and uh, he said that wearing that red hat makes him feel like putting on Superman's cape, and now he's a superhero flying away. I like what was it Don Lemon or someone else that goes that was a straight up minstrel show. I don't know, but it's, whether he realizes it or not, basically, basically he turned himself into a tool. For a racist establishment to further go, see, we're not racist. We let a black guy in the Oval Office. 
that's, that's yeah that is another big part of it yeah and like I don't know if he's mentally ill or not. I don't know if he just has too much money. Like a lot of people with too much money seem to be completely uh, off his rocker. But yeah, he's just he's just going from one subject to an- another and like showing president like pictures of like a, a jet that he should be flying and like talking about how he didn't like Hillary because the I'm with her didn't make him feel like a lot of you know he likes a lot of male energy and like da 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 da. Yeah, it was just I didn't even watch it all. I'm like this is just sad. Also, it was fun to watch Trump just go like, uh, can I? Can I get out of here? And like, this is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Go. What's amazing is that uh, old Derpy. Um, one of the things he said was that he uh, he had a bunch of like important meet- meetings planned for the day with like uh, senators and stuff like that. He's like, and the news really didn't seem to care about all that. But then whenever I floated the idea of Kanye, suddenly everyone was very interested. So you know, I like that because see, Trump's really stupid and he doesn't know the difference between high ratings and doing something well. So as long as he has high ratings, he thinks he's yeah, doing something we know, good. Yeah, we know that. He it's lives... like whenever you give a dog a treat, it doesn't know if you're giving it that treat because it did something positive or negative but you're rewarding it anyway it just knows oh i do this i get a treat that's that's trump he's like oh i got high ratings well that that's good for me well because he's a reality tv star and that's how he thinks he thinks in sound bites and ratings not in like long-term political planning of course right. we all know that so yeah, I like, all right. um matt oswalt's tweet about it he said uh, the saddest part of trump bringing a mentally ill rapper to the white house to take the media's focus off uh, climate change, the election, and his tax evasion is that it totally worked. Yeah. Though I do think that Oswald gives uh, Trump way too much credit there. I never think Trump does anything to distract people from the other disasters. I think that Trump is just, you know, he's a walking, shitting disaster, and he shits out a new one every five seconds Yeah. Well, to, like, to fill his adult diaper with remember, the next or there are also really There are also people around him that are like, thing. yeah, get Kanye in there. That'll distract from all that, right? Because remember, yeah, there, are, there, there also, might be smart people in the room. That's yeah, well, true. he's also he's his strings are being pulled. He's a rubber stamp. You've yeah. got like the Mitch McConnells and the Mercers and all these other people that are just using him as a rubber stamp. Um, so, uh, uh, I, yeah. I do have a few few other things before we get into the much longer editorial. Oh God! All right, what what is it going to be now? Uh, let's start with uh, Nikki Haley. Oh yeah, she's leaving. Yeah, the U.S. ambassador to the UN or something. Yep. Uh, she uh so she quit and she's one of the few people that didn't quit under obvious scandal now it does look like there's some uh crimes going down the pipe for her but for the most part it looks like she just sort of stepped down uh because of uh what a catastrophic uh failure this administration is now publicly the gop are giving her well wishes but privately they hate her guts for not waiting just one more month and quitting after the midterms right well with her but, there's also rumors that may be true that she's quitting so that she can run a viable presidential campaign in 2020 well, uh, I mean, they're also saying that um, part of her quitting is part of a grand scheme to get um, what's-his-face to become uh, Jesus. I can't remember the name or the position. Uh, the the squirrely guy, the southern guy. The, oh, I do declare how they treated you, Mr. Kavanaugh. Oh, uh, uh, Lindsey Graham? Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham wants to take um, what's-his-face's position. You got to give me some descriptors, man. Like, you can't, like... Like I don't know, uh, I don't know who what's his face is. Uh, attorney, attorney general. That's it. Oh, he Giuliani. wants to be attorney. Uh, he wants to become well, attorney general for uh, Trump. He said, and he, that he's been trying out for that for a while. So well, there's all kinds of speculation. Yeah, he said he didn't. I don't know. I think it would fighting be, for power. I think that would be a mistake. I think leaving uh, his current position for that would be leaving a because he'll be around after Trump's gone. But if he leaves that, when the Trump administration falls apart, he'll he'll be gone with it. Yeah. I mean, I hope a lot of people that clung to Trump and supported Trump are fucking gone the second Trump is. Well, the point but... is, he might put Kushner or Ivanka in as um, UN ambassador, which is also some stuff that's been floated. Yes, yes, Trump said um, with all sincerity that he would like to replace Nikki Haley with Ivanka. But Nikki Haley, make no mistake, she quit because Trump called the UN climate report a hoax and because Trump threatened to start another trade war, including illegal trade wars, uh, one so big, and this is um, written by Brecca, uh, one so big that IMF had to redo its fiscal forecast with a more negative outlook, being the person who has to listen to the UN after Trump lied to their faces and got laughed at in front of the entire world. Well, Basically, you... she had her reasons for quitting. 
So you know in like Game of Thrones how the winter is coming and instead of anybody kind of like shoring up supplies and like you know, getting ready uh, for the inevitable winter. Uh, Remember the, been, the ant been, and the grasshopper. Yeah, they've been fighting, burning, and pillaging, and now winter has started and no one has any food. That's what's going to happen here. Like, we're actively, like, we're not doing anything to, like, prepare for the inevitable climate change, which is, is going to happen, and it is not going to be stopped at this point. We're just making things worse. So when it does hit, we'll be even worse shape than had we just done nothing. We're actively going the wrong way. Yeah, it's wonderful. So we also had a, another stock market panic this week for the oh, third time this year. I loved that. So he's blaming the Fed, and I'm like, bitch, you are the Fed. <laughs> you know who's really at fault here? This Donald Trump fellow. You know, some people really don't seem to like that guy. Yeah, I'm wait, s- I'm him? Disaster! I'm, I'm like, I'm, I cannot wait till he firmly blames himself, but now he's wearing a mustache, and he's like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that Donald Trump. I am... I'm, what was the what was the guy he used to like pretend to be when he would call the papers about himself? Uh, I know who you're talking about. It's like John uh, Barrow or John Barron. John Barron. John Barron. Yeah, which is kind of ironic. I just realized he named his son Barron, so like he yes. just yeah. Uh, he yeah, just likes that, that name. That wasn't that was that was Donald Trump. I'm John Barron. See the mustache, clearly not the same guy. Um, yeah, Sad. so he blamed the Fed for raising uh, interest rates, which should have been raised. Like, as the economy recovers, you want to raise interest rates because that's what you do. The stock market is tanking because, as we know, it's going to tank because it's on that way. Like, people are buying and selling, like we talked about in another thing, like it's Kmart, right. and they're current, going out of business. Right, our current economy is smash and grab. It's uh, Everyone's just trying to get what they can and get out the door before everything falls apart. Which is also brings us to uh, our That's Cute news for the week. We haven't had one of these in a while. Yeah, ugh, what's cute? Uh, what's cute is that um, Trump's wretched uh, tariffs. Wait, no, I called him Trump the wretched, not wretched tariffs. Trump, Trump the wretched, his tariffs have already cost four billions of dollars and have forced them to lay off thousands of employees. And the damage is only just beginning. Like climate change, we're only at the tip of the iceberg, which is quickly sinking into the ocean. Yeah. And also, Sears is bankrupt, so they're probably going to be shutting down, but we'll see. We don't know well, yet. Sears, Sears has been bankrupt for a while. They also bought Kmart, which, you know, in light of our, our hyperbole, doesn't seem like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, so, like, that whole thing is just falling apart for them. Yeah. So, yeah, um, and um, so Trump's so terrible that he is ruining one of the oldest companies in America, Ford, and... For no reason, right? Like, this, his tariffs and trade wars aren't doing any good. Tariffs only hurt the country that enact them. They don't hurt the one you're enacting them against, especially if that country can be like, well, we'll just sell to these other people then. We don't well, have to sell to Well, we talked about it before, but, like, history is cyclical as it, as it repeats. And, like, right before the Great Depression happened, uh, to kind of bolster things, it was this guy, these two guys named Smoot and Hawley. They're known as the Smoot-Hawley Tariffs. Uh, they enacted a bunch of tariffs in the United States to kind of like, you know, shore up American workers, which just made the problem worse. And we're doing it again. And we know that they're a bad idea. We know they don't serve any purpose. Uh, but I'd say, you know what? Bring on the, bring on the post-apocalypse. I'm, uh, I'm ready. Well, I think that the GOP is not stopping him from ruining our economy because they're hoping that he ruins it just as they're they're hoping that the economy will hold on just until the Democrats get back in charge. So the Democrats won't be able to actually help America and let us move forward as a nation. But instead, they'll just be fixing the GOP's mess for like eight years. Right. And then by the time they're done cleaning up the GOP's catastrophic mess, then the GOP can be like, oh, look at what a terrible eight years it's been compared to when we were in power. The only, you should vote for us again. The only problem with that is there will be no fixing it. Uh, as you go into an economic depression, it won't be a recession. It'll be a full-on depression. We're going to go into an economic depression. Uh, we're going to see natural disasters unlike we've never seen before. Now, the natural disasters will be irreversible, but everything else will be um, will be fixable like always. You can't, fix the, once the- you can't fix the economy when like the economy keeps getting swept away by hurricanes. Yeah, I mean, that's. I was just saying that that by itself in a vacuum can be fixed, but the new outlier is. I mean, the new X factor will be the weather. That's going to put a big stopper on that. Apparently, there was some talk about why don't we use nukes to stop hurricanes recently. What? Yeah. 
Uh, and so a friend of that, mine who's a meteorologist explained it. He goes, the amount of yeah, the yeah, amount of ahead. energy you would need to disrupt a hurricane would destroy the Earth with nuclear winter. Uh, best case scenario, you maybe disrupt the eye for a little while, but then you basically create a uh, radioactive hurricane that's <laughs> just like, yeah. Um, so I, why not? Let's, let's nuke a hurricane. Let's see what happens. I'm ready to roll the fucking ball. Yeah, I mean, fucking, the, that's the problem is that the deplorables don't know anything. And now imagine if the... Let, you know, let's nuke a hurricane person was the president of the United States. That's basically what we have right now. And everyone's trying to stop him from just solving all of his problems with nukes. You know, like how um, the old cartoons of someone wants to change the TV or the TV using a gun as a remote, right? Well, Trump would just want to launch a nuke at it and that'll get the right button. It'll well, get all the buttons. Well, like, um, yeah, the, the, the bigger problem is, as human beings, we have a huge we have a huge disadvantage in that we're not very good at long term planning. We're very good at I do this thing and this thing happens. Therefore, they must be connected, right? Right. So right. if if every time you drive your car and eat a cheeseburger and strangle a baby penguin, if every time you do that, like a hurricane doesn't rise up, it's very hard for us at our base to connect those two things. Yeah, I mean, The Simpsons had a great bit about this whenever. Uh, Homer was talking about the bear tax, right? Bear he's patrol! Like, well, he's like, the bear tax must be working. And Lisa's like, well, what if I told you this, you know, rock stopped lions from attacking you? And Homer's like, now how could a rock do that? Well, you don't see any lions around, do you? And then Homer's like looking around. He's like, I'll give you $5 for the rock. Yeah, it's, yeah, there's a great episode of The Simpsons where, like, I don't remember who was attacked by bear or whatever, but, like, the city government immediately uh for a non-threat spent millions and millions of dollars on like bear patrol and they yeah. they deemed it a success because there was never really any bear threat and so that's kind of a joke about how we think as humans is we're just like yeah clearly this must work because a happened it's the same it's the same with the people who are like anti-vaxxers they see a link uh, between yeah. vaccines and autism because children generally began developing uh, or showing signs of autism uh at the same time they get vaccinated Right, but I mean, lots of stuff also happens around that time. Like, what if going to pre-K is the cause of autism? Because that's whenever they. But you when, know that's when that, it like, developed. Or but whatever. you know, scientifically, autism is genetic, and it is impossible to make someone autistic. So right, it's an right. impossibility. You're born with that gene, but they see A happened, then B happened, so A and B must be connected. Right, and they think that uh, there's a correlation between increasing the number of vac vaccinations people get and 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 increase in autism but the only reason why that's both going up is because we've become better at diagnosing autism yeah. in people so that's why there's a supposed increase it's not really increasing just we can spot it better so more people quote unquote have it just because we're able to say okay this person's on the spectrum this person is etc yeah like our uh, because we, like, because like the we guy understand running, it so much better like the, than like, before like the guy running for governor in georgia well eh. I'm saying that he talks like he's got autism. I, I know. I, I was ba I was backing away from that very quickly. <laughs> and then we cut to commercial. Well, that's weird. They never had commercials before. <laughs> All right. So, sp so speaking of um, things, I'd like to give a uh, shout out to someone. Oh God! Who did they? Did, wait, hold on. Did they like our show? Did they give us likes? Did they comment? They uh they did comment and gave us a five star review on iTunes. So we have what three five star reviews now? <laughs> We're up to three reviews now. Oh this is God. amazing. We we still don't have enough to um have an average review score. iTunes is still saying you know not enough reviews to um have an average. Which is making me wonder how many more we're gonna need, but shit, we're up to three now. Hell yeah. Right. After thirty seven uh, episodes, we finally got a piece of the pie. <laughs> I finally got a piece. Ah, moving, moving on, on up, up. <laughs> to the to east another side. podcast. Anyway, all right, yeah, give the give the shout out. Uh, what is it? Mo Daggles. Mo Daggles <laughs> gave us a f a five star review. So thank you. Oh, I think I know who that is, and that happened a while back, and I forgot about it. Uh, uh, Mo Daggles does not listen to this podcast, I'm pretty sure, but she is a dear friend. So thank you, Mo Daggles, if you ever do go back and listen. Ah, 
But still, that's we're up to three reviews. And anyone else listening, if you want to give us a review on uh, iTunes or wherever else, if you're listening and you want us to do more of this, please go go give us a like, give us a review, and subscribe for the love of God. Subscribe uh, to the fifty people who listened to that one episode. Come on. It was like 80 for another episode. Was it, it like really started booming. I'm in a podcast community thing, and they're just like, I'm only getting a thousand listens per episode. What do I do to grow my audience? And I'm just like, <laughs> you and yours. <laughs> <laughs> you and yours. Yeah. Oh, oh. At this point, I'm just doing the AM radio thing where like we can just do this for 50 years, and eventually like people will start listening. It'll work out someday. <laughs> Someday. All right, so tell us about that Trump op-ed as much as I'm going to hate to hear it. Oh, my God. Yeah, so we have burned through everything else I have except for this editorial. My God. I cannot wait to hear what an illiterate man has to say about things he does not understand. Okay, so this is um, virtually everything. Thing I have to say on this is uh, by Brecca, so I'll be quoting Brecca a lot. And I'll also be quoting uh, Trump's ghostwriter. So uh, let's count them down. Number one, throughout the year, we have seen Democrats across the country uniting around a new legislative proposal that would end Medicare as we know it and take away benefits that seniors have paid for their entire lives. Sanders' plan involved making things currently either unavailable or those with deductibles under current Medicare law covered and with no deductible, such as hearing aids. His or such as hearing aids. His plan also involves slowly lowering the age of entry until everyone is covered. There is not a single word in his plan about lowering or removing benefits. Trump flat out lied. No, that's great. Yeah, that's actually a great way to do it. So you're worried about the cost of it. Cool. All right. So then you start lowering the age and we start letting people in little bit by little bit. It's pretty brilliant. So we wouldn't have to enact anything new. We already have Medicaid. We have Medicare. We know how it works. Right. Um, so all we're doing is we're slow. We're increasing it till everybody has access. Boom, right? Why is exactly. that yeah, why why is that bad? Uh because uh our current president's a lying sack of shit who just straight up makes up uh, a reason for it to be bad, knowing that the deplorables won't be smart enough to actually go and double check. Well, because it'll cut out the problem is it'll cut out um uh what do you call it? It'll cut out insurance medical insurance companies who are parasites. Right, uh, so they want. Yes, to keep... that's that's the big problem. Is that uh, pharmaceuticals have a shitload of money to uh, be had by exploiting the current system. The way I heard it, the way I heard it, and, explained... al- and also insurance companies, way more than pharmaceutical people. If you can imagine, insurance companies are uh, sacks of shit as well. But well, the continue. way the way I heard it explained made so much sense. It's that it's you need a third party negotiator. If you have cancer and you're like, oh no, I've got the cancer, and uh, you know somebody's like, well, we have a treatment. What can they, a little quiz, what do you think, how much do you think they can charge you for the cancer treatment? However the fuck much they want. Exactly, because you're like, well, I don't want to die, so I guess, yeah. Like, if you need medical help, like, I mean, Jesus, like, an EMT, if they really wanted to, could be like, well, you're bleeding a lot, it's going to be a hundred bucks. If you, you'd pay a hundred bucks because you don't want to die, right? So people are willing to pay whatever. But if a government entity as a third party goes... Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? We're not paying $100 for Band-Aids. That's ridiculous. Come up with a better price. Then you can't gouge anymore because the government doesn't have cancer. You know what I mean? It's an impartial uh, negotiator. And all those yeah. insurance companies could switch to other insurance. If you want, if you don't want to use single-payer health care, then you can buy your own insurance, but you don't have to. Right. And, my God, it's just so insane to me that we're the only first-world developed nation that does not have health care paid for for us like we just it's we do ridiculous. not have the right to life here it's ridiculous when you're sucking on the government tit and you're going you know what government tits are the worst you know what they're poison they'll poison you that's what they want to do aren't you on the government tit shut up this tit's mine like mm-hmm. dude you're a congressman or a senator you get the golden health care package why don't we okay so then why don't we all do that if, if uh-huh or why don't you drop your health care and pay for it then if socialized medicine is so bad? Yeah, goals. that's what the senators have, socialized medicine. Yeah. And as soon as they had access to that, they're like, oh, we need this. Yeah. And then they just rub How it come all we're over paying, themselves. Why are we paying for, um, uh, oh, what's his name? But I mean, oh, we paid for Dick Cheney's fifth heart, but like people can't afford insulin. 
All right. I mean, fucking an ambulance ride is like ten thousand dollars right there per, or is it five thousand? Whatever. It, I well, do it, know it, that it, per it, day in the hospital is ten thousand dollars. Yeah. So if you have to stay in the hospital for a week, that's a very nice new car worth of money that you have to pay out. And everything they did for you, they can put any price tag on it exactly. that they want. Five hundred dollars for an aspirin easily did a doctor come and see you every single time he poked his head in the room even if he just said are you okay that counts as a doctoral concert consultation that's yep. another two thousand dollars just for saying hey are you okay also what i don't i don't fuck? know how you're selling old people on like this but will the make reason your... the reason why hospitals can charge you that much is because they're not being they're supposedly aren't being paid by you they're being paid by the insurance companies but then the insurance companies you know so then the hospitals don't have to feel bad about charging the patient they're charging this nameless faceless entity but the nameless faceless entity would be like ah oh, hell no i'm not doing this and so they push all the costs right back onto you even though you've been paying them shitloads of money they will just say well no not so only are we not gonna pay this but we're in hiking up your premium insurance because you're trying to cash out insurance works in, in not such... to mention it's fucking gambling anyway yeah you shouldn't well medical insurance there's no shouldn't the republicans be like against that because they're supposed to be the christian party and christians don't believe in gambling or at least they think you shouldn't do it dude they you know that they're not actual christians um yeah it's, no it's like nobody nobody you if you were running an insurance company you would never willingly get into the insurance market unless it was rigged in such a way because the idea of insurance is yeah, the, your, the house your, always wins. Yes, you're banking on enough people, like with car insurance, you're banking on enough people paying in and not wrecking at any one time. That oh, you, I, I, actually, the house doesn't always win. I heard about this one guy that ran casinos that was so shit at it that he bankrupted his casinos seven times. But <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. the but that was an outlier. Most people that run casinos don't go bankrupt seven times. It's like man, what, what complete fucking loser that doesn't know how to run anything except into the ground did that huh i wonder what could his name be it was donald trump well like uh the uh <coughs> the problem is like whenever the insurance is called to task like whenever like you know people that have flood insurance and they get hit by massive flood the insurance can't it won't pay out because it's a scam right because they right. don't ever have the money to pay out if everybody cashes in at the same time. And the right. problem that's with... why we had the uh, 2008 recession because everyone needed to cash out at the same and, time when and all the banks with... started to here's, here's clear the, bankruptcy. The thing about medical medical stuff, medical insurance is everyone will or, get sick. Uh, or I, I misspoke when all the banks started to um, need their claim. anyway. Everyone will get sick. You will get old. You will get sick. You will get injured. It is inevitable. That is the way our bodies work. So the only way the we insurance are. companies can make money is to jack up the prices and then drop you as soon as it starts costing them. Yeah. Yeah. It's complete. yeah basically, that's what they do. Like the uh, the young feed the old, and then what they do with the old is whenever the old actually need it, they're all like, ah, oh, actually, you're um, you no longer qualify for this because. Uh, goodbye and then they just like close the door and you're you're locked out of the emerald city not nobody gets in to get their health care not nobody not know how yeah uh what was so what was it well yeah what was the next point sorry i went off on a tangent i just get mad when people go oh your health care is going to get worse under socialized medicine really as in what because for a long oh. time a long time <laughs> i haven't had health care so how is it worse uh, it's fine i'm not going to have health care at the end of this year either the, the only uh, way that the only way it could be worse is if someone came to my house and shot me in the leg. That's the only way, and they'd be like, "Yep, this is brought this this shot this this shotgun blast to the leg was brought to you by socialized medicine." Yep, yep. So uh, <laughs> they shot you in the leg. They're like, "Ah, oh, that's a shot from a professional." So now you owe us money. Yep. But if uh, if hearing stuff like that makes you angry, though, oh, you're in for a ride because that was point one of nine. God damn. Well, at least I'm not still <laughs> eating that baked potato. <laughs> I missed the baked potato. All right, so... Uh, all right, so number two. As a candidate, I promised that we would... Or, I promised that we would protect coverage for patients with pre-existing conditions and create new health care insurance options that would lower premiums. I have kept that promise, and now we are seeing health insurance premiums coming down. Are we? No, no, like mine just got jacked up from 100 to 450. That's why I'm not going to have insurance in a month. But anyway. Sweet. So here's what uh, Brecca said. Another blatant lie. As I've posted before, Trump's attack attacks on ACA, uh, that's Affordable Care... What? What is ACA? The Affordable Afford Care Act. Affordable Care Act. 
Sorry, I just I got really dizzy or, all of a sudden because I've been walking around. Because um, <laughs> you don't have health insurance anymore, so your uh, brain's like, let's check out. Yeah, yeah. All right. Trump's attacks on the ACA, such as removing the core features that everyone must buy insurance, and his reversal on the aforementioned pre-existing condition, conditions, uh, have not only directly broken his promises, but there is no credible study in which costs are going down. Instead, there are credible studies showing that costs are increasing much faster than during the ACA's original setup. Well, then what uh, they so what the, why that's a master stroke of 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 uh, McConnell and those guys is because they left they so they basically by their actions they gutted it and then they're going to say well this is what we told you would happen this is Obama's fault your right, premium their fucking fault because yeah. they're the ones that ruined it right but they but they made Obama own it and they ruined it and then they go see what happened Obama did it yeah so I I also made a solemn promise to our greatest in seniors to protect medicare that is why i'm fighting so hard against the democrats plan which would eviscerate medicare why okay so just on the basis of like why would why do you think democrats would want to eviscerate medicare they're in 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 the republicans terms the democrats are the party of handouts right Yar. so if they're the party of handouts why would they be screwing up uh, uh a quote-unquote handout i don't really think it's a handout but so you're you're not even on your own message. Like, he said stuff about Stacey Abrams, like like kind of like that, where he's like, uh, she loves crime, okay? You know, I'm like, who the fuck loves crime besides a Batman villain? Trump. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what? You got me there. I'm like, what kind of human being would be like, I love crime. I love committing it. I love rolling around in it. Look, I found a bunch of crime on the ground at the park. Mm. Like... <laughs> Like, yeah, sorry, continue. Uh, I just, this, yeah, as, I'm so as, angry now. As, and this is back to Brecca, as mentioned before, there is no Democrat plan to eviscerate Medicare. There is still, or that's still a lie. Also, while it's more of a lie of omission than a blatant lie, the Kaiser Foundation found that Medicare funding will run out in 20. 26. Yes! Oh, yes! All the old people are going to die, and then the world's going to be better, I think. Yeah. Oh, so Trump pushed it back? No, it was due to run out in 2029, but Trump moved it forward three years. So, once again, he made it worse. Democrats have already... Or, Democrats have already harmed seniors by slashing Medicare by more than $800 billion. They tried to give you health care, and you shot it down! Over 10 years to pay for Obamacare. Obamacare? Nope. That, what? God, God, God. <laughs> Fucking damn it. Like, the, the Democrats took away your health care by trying to give you health care. See? They took money from your health care to give you health care. Like, that doesn't even make any sense. That's like, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? You're hitting me! Yeah. But why are the Democrats hitting you? You're punching me right there! The like, Democrats are... I can't Aren't wait. In the room. I can't wait for the part of the 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 op-ed where he goes, Democrats have a plan. It's called the purge. Okay, they will be coming, house <laughs> to house, in 2020 to kill you and your loved ones. I promise that I'm not going to let the Democrats purge you, but I can't help if I don't get elected. I'm doing a tremendous job. So far under <laughs> me, no one's been purged. Except all those voters. <laughs> yeah, they are, they're doing a shitload of purging in Georgia. It's uh, 75000 worth. It's coming house to uh, house, taking your vote. So, Breaker points out that it was actually the uh, Republicans that did what Trump just said the Democrats did. Uh, Obama raised Medicare payroll taxes, adding over $300 billion to the funding. Incidentally, Trump's proposed budget cuts $350 billion from Medicare. Yeah, and gives it all to the ultra-rich. Yeah. Uh, the Democrat plan would inevitably lead to to the massive rationing of health care. Doctors and hospitals would be put out of business. Seniors would lose access to their favorite doctors. There would be long waits in line for appointments and procedures. There already are! Previously covered cost would effectively be denied. No, you can't deny people under single care, single pair. You can't deny people under Medicaid. You can't be like, well, I need a new knee. And then your doctor going, well, I'd help you. But after 20 years of serving my community, 
I can no longer be your doctor. Yeah. Sad. So, uh, Breka says none of this makes sense. If there was a rush on medical care, why the hell would hospitals and doctors go out of business? Yeah. Why would procedures be denied if the government was footing everyone's bill? There are plenty of countries in the world that have care for all without doctors suddenly going out of business. Yeah. Because they had too many patients. Here's the thing. Like, if you... The thing was with... Uh, with single payer health care, it doesn't make like private health care illegal. You you could still go buy insurance and be like, you know what? I want to go to a doctor with a funny mustache, just like my president. And you can pay for that and you can get the premium package. <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to use single payer health care. But for people who are like, I am old and need insulin and my power's off because I don't have any money, they can go to the hospital. Yep. I, I just want to go with the millionaires and the billionaires are. All right, what's okay, it? Yeah. Bernie. This is why I stopped reading this um, until like, I stopped reading as I say for the podcast. I started reading it and then I was just like, oh man, I've got insurance, but I also think I'm going to have an aneurysm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's time to cash out on that insurance. Oh, that means your premium's going to go up once you use it. Uh, no, well my, well, my well my my job provides me. I'm on the I'm on the teat, and it's ah, great. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I have a nice. job that provides. Well, I had a job that provides uh, insurance and decent benefits, but I only got that because of unions. And uh, as we've talked about, unions are sad. They just want to get you better benefits that hurt you. Get rid of unions. <laughs> uh... The Democrats' plan would also mean the end of choice for seniors over their own health care No, decisions. I think it means the, the end of choice for seniors between, like, going to the doctor because, like, the left side of your face started sagging or, you know, buying enough dog food for you and your only dog on your limited fixed income. Well, old Yeller wanted to eat, but I had a cough, so I couldn't risk the pneumonia again. I had to put old Yeller down. It's so bad. Like, literally, all the stuff he's Sad. saying, like, it could not be worse. You people are rationing their insulin right now. I did not know that. That sounds horrifying. Yeah, people are diabetics who need insulin. Like, like there's stories of pharmacists going, I've literally seen people break down crying when they see the price of insulin. Um... Because you will die without insulin. And people have died, and they're like, maybe I can just... Yeah, maybe I can that's just... what healthcare is. Like, they literally have... It's literally like there's a gun to your head. It's like, do this or die. And that's why people are crying, because they're like, well, shit, I have to do this, but I can't afford it. What the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. And meanwhile, Trump's like, well, actually, what they're going to do is take away benefits from seniors. That's why you can't... <laughs> it's all about choice, okay? Yeah, they're going to take away my favorite doctor. You know who that is? Fucking, any of them? I was going to say Dr. One that'll see you? I was going to say Dr. Pepper. <laughs> you know what? When you can't afford a real doctor, Dr. Pepper and Southern Comfort, that'll cure what ails you. I, well, I don't drink sodas anymore, but I'll take some SoCo. I'm just saying if you're dying, you know what I mean? If you're just, yeah, you're like. whiskey. Yeah. Stop ruining my joke. Nah. Continue. Anyway. Instead, Democrats would give total power and control over seniors' health care decisions to the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. What's wrong uh, with a bureaucrat? They do paperwork. Why do we hate bureaucrats? Trump is a bureaucrat now. Not really. He doesn't he, like to... You're not a it, bureaucrat but... if you eat the paperwork, okay? <laughs> Just like you're not, no, a, I mean, you're not an artist he's, if he's you eat the... He's within that dome. You're not an artist if you eat glue sticks. That doesn't make you an artist. J J Jason Pollock would disagree with you. He gets paid lots of money to like spin around and smear paint on a canvas. You mean so I'm you mean you mean, ja be... you mean Jackson Pollock, not the uh, Asian kid we went to school with? Oh, <laughs> yeah, Jackson Pollock, not Jason Pollock. Anyway, po point being is that some art can be very weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Continue, joke killer. Ah, uh, the Medicare is already government run. There is no suggested change, no matter what Trump's lying says. Yeah, it, it, any Medicare, any medical care is better than none. It, like, yeah. even if they showed up and they go, well, you know, uh, we can save you some money on anesthesia if you bite down on this stick, but the procedure will be free. That's still better than what they do now, which is charge you $5,000 for the stick. Yeah. 
So, the New Democrats are radical socialists who want to model America's economy after Venezuela. I hate that, and I'm so angry. I got relatives that, like, are, like my family spent time in Venezuela. I have relatives in Venezuela, and they keep going, look at what happened to Venezuela. See, that's what socialism gets you. No, that's what a dictator gets you. Yeah, like Trump. Yeah, they had a dictator. He squandered all their money. Now they're almost a failed like state. Trump. Yeah, exactly. It fucking exactly. I really, if you want to point to socialism, why don't you point to a, 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 a like where it does work, like in like you know Norway and like Sweden, like everywhere else. Yeah, literally everywhere else. You, you just cherry pick the worst country. It's that argument we had where we're like, okay, so you call you call um you you call Venezuela socialist, right? Do you really believe that North Korea is the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea? Do you really think they're democratic? Because that's what democracy gets you. Yeah. Uh, this is a familiar talking point around these parts. It's still false. Not a single Democrat has ever suggested Venezuela as a role model. Why would you? And it's not! <laughs> Oh man, number eight's apparently going to make us very angry. Is this uh, like before... is this is this going to be like the the top list of Stephen King movies that was uh, like this guy gave his top <laughs> ten list and I vehemently disagreed? We can uh, we can go over that list too if you want. I mean mm. we're running long, but we're running we're running out of time. But let's finish up on this because I'm going to die of uh, an anger stroke by the end of this. <laughs> Ah, some Democrats' absolute commitment to end enforcement of our le of our immigration laws by abolishing immigration and customs enforcement. That means millions more would cross our borders illegally and take advantage of our health care, paid for by American taxpayers. Dude, no one's suggesting that. No one. Which, the fact that you're saying that makes me think that maybe that's what you're going to do. Huh. Yeah, because he does usually do everything he's... There was a it moment. Other there was a moment in the Republican Party where they were like, "How do we get away with all this evil stuff that we want to do?" And they go, they look at like their talking points, and they go, "What if we change we will to the Democrats?" <laughs> and then they've just been like, "This is gold, Jerry, gold!" Like they've just gone with it. Like they're like, "All right, so what if?" And I'm just spitballing here. What if we get a lease and reopen Auschwitz, right? And we just start the genocide all over again. And then and one then, of them's like, why don't you change that we to the Democrats? And they just high five. Uh, Trump, Trump will be like, you know, the Democrats just reopened Auschwitz and they're moving all of our Jewish citizens over to it. I would stop them, but I'm not going to be able to do that unless you vote for me in 2020, okay? That's the only way I'll be able to stop the Democrats who keep daily training so all the Democrats to point, the internment camp. Is point one going to be gun control? Because that seems like the only stupid thing left they have to hit. Maybe. But uh, non-citizens don't get Medicare, so what they he's saying get, is also a blatant lie. They, yeah, they don't get any benefits, and people are like, these illegals come over and get benefits. They don't. They don't get benefits. They contribute greatly to our economy and take nothing. They get nothing back from it. They don't get retirement. Yeah. They don't get Social Security, but they're paying in. So, right. yeah. So, yeah. Fuck these deplorables. Okay, number nine. Re this is actually the last one. Republicans believe that a Medicare program that was created for seniors and paid for by seniors their entire lives should always be protected and preserved. Dude, it's paid for by everyone. Well, well didn't earlier we say that it's running out in 2026? Yeah. Yeah, so like eight years and it's gone. Huh. Anyway, the last point by Scro, the CBO says the government is already due to pay less and less of the overall medical bills of the country with the taxpayers paying more and more themselves. Also, due to age tiers, already Americans get more out of Medicare than they put into it. Mm -hmm. Feel free to read his article and point things or point out the things that are true, I'm fairly sure he signed his name right. You know what? If you want to go that way, that's fine. I'll, I'll stop paying for old people. Because that's the way that things work right now. Old people are living so long. Um, is that, like, I, everything they've paid in is gone. So they're currently being supported by the next up-and-coming generations. Where that you're not paying for... You paid for someone who's dead now. You paid for their Medicaid and Medicare. I'm paying for yours. And you know what? If it comes down to it, old people, old listeners, because I know that we're really popular in the, like, 70 to 85 demographic. Um, you know what? I tell you what. Since you're, you pay for your medical... You, 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 you pay for it, and I get Medicare, since I'm paying taxes and you're not working. 
Because they're old. They're all retired. Like, they're all getting their benefits that they paid into. But their benefits were... They basically paid the benefits of the other generation. So, yeah. You know what, Grandpa? Why don't you get a job? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Walmart's hiring. Greeters. They could be greeters and then pay for uh, my my medical bills. Yeah. And then I could get uh, more painkillers for my knee. You know, I had a theory. Because uh, th th this hurricane weather's making it act up again. You know, I had a theory once, and I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here <laughs> to make us completely deplorable. We've insulted, I think, just about everybody today. Uh, I think that we ought to just like... Uh, uh, only the autistic and the living. <laughs> the autistic and the living. Here's what you do. When you turn 65, instead of getting benefits, slavery. We enslave old people. You know what? They do all the jobs that the quote-unquote immigrants are doing. And, yeah. So, guess what, old people? Get out in the fields. It's your turn now. Can, can African Americans be exempt from that? Because I feel yes. like okay, um, yeah, that, you know that, would be super, that would old, be super awkward. Old white people. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. You know what? Old, old white people. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to amend uh, uh, my slavery um, uh, amendment here. I'm going to add an amendment to it. Uh, old white people, get out in the fields. It's your turn. This is the mess you made. Now go pick some crops. Oh, Trump only has three more years, and then he has to be out there into the crop fields. Yeah, exactly, right? So once you hit a certain age, it's just like, well, slavery. I pick, I, I pick more corn than anyone today. Many people are saying, you just sat over there and you yelled at people. Did not. That, that's a lie. Fake news, okay? You just got an empty corn bushel. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah. I, I picture him like walking around stealing other people's bushels and saying, "This person didn't pick anything because now their bushel's mine." The Democrats want to. I, pick, I picked all of these. The Democrats want to see all of your corn taken away. They, they, they want you to spend more hours out here under the hot sun without this big, nice hat and this little fan that I get to walk around with. But the thing is, it basically breaks down to we can afford it and we should. I like that idea of like slowly expanding Medicare so that like everyone gets it. Like, that's great. Like, yeah. What what if we uh what if we didn't spend fifteen times more than the next thirty countries combined on military, huh? Yeah, that would be nice. But but like cut our military budget you know, in half, and we would still be paying ten times more those, than the next thirty combined. All but... those veterans benefits problems. If they had a single health care option plus their veterans benefits. You probably wouldn't see people, veterans, killing themselves outside the VA hospital because they can't get help. Just spitballing here. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that uh, if we would take care of our veterans, then, uh, yeah, that maybe we should. My mama said Medicaid would take me anywhere. As long as I'm over 60. Yeah, so that's, I stopped, that's why I stopped reading that because I was just like... This is all bullshit, and it's just, it's making my, my, let my eyeball bulge with anger, like. Yeah, but somehow this was like a major point in the news this week, so, all right, let, let's cover it. It's, uh, it's better than the bullshit that went down last week, I guess. At least this is just, like, infuriating, stupid, and wrong. But it does let you know what the Republicans' talking points are, right? Yep. Like, some puppet master somewhere, probably Stephen Miller or something. Oh, he was in the news today. Oh, yeah, his third grade teacher so, got fired because his third grade teacher said so, that he eats glue? Uh, suspended. She was suspended because she said that, yeah, I remember him in third grade. He used to eat glue. Why would they suspend her for that? I don't know, but yeah. uh, they really shouldn't have. It's probably true. I mean, you know, eating glue as a third <laughs> grader probably explains a lot. You know, Stephen Miller is, like, younger than us. Uh, yeah, by a few years. Yeah. He's, like, 31. <laughs> Evil he, he really does age you. <laughs> it's true it's true i look half his age I, I look like i could be his son and yet he's younger than me he looks like the emperor after the uh electricity backfired on him in uh star wars after samuel l jackson was windowed yep well i guess that's our uh that's our episode for uh this week guys um you know the apocalypse is nigh so uh i don't know man I'm kind of excited, like the trash can man from uh from um uh, the Stephen King's uh the stand the stand yeah 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 I'm just like oh the big fire big fire for you my life for you yeah it's gonna be wonderful <laughs> wonderful apocalypse what were we talking about again oh yeah the whole podcast uh, everyone yeah I don't remember. 
Well, oh, well, we, we covered a lot of stuff in this podcast. Summarize it for me. Um, okay, so if you're if you're in Georgia, get out, get out and vote. Check <laughs> to make sure you haven't been purged by Forrest Gump for governor. Vote for Stacey Abrams. My God, um, show that even with voter suppression, like that Georgia is going to change. Um, you know, uh, don't believe lies about health care. Uh, I don't know. Eat your eat your vegetables. Get eight hours of sleep. It's almost like we're talking directly to Wesley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This podcast is mostly just for him at this point. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. Well, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, and if the if the apocalypse doesn't happen between now and next episode, we will see you next week. Yar. Good night, Wesley. <laughs>